soldier, enemy, sportsman, hero, friend or statesman would all have done the job too. Yet in telling the story of how he traveled along the path the makers were only ever going to frame it around his remarkable career between the sticks from the end of the war to his retirement in 1964. Much of Trotman's story is well known. A former German paratrooper who came to Britain as a POW in 1944 was spotted and picked up by Manchester City and went on to break his neck, win hearts on the FA Cup final in 1956. As the film's star, Oscar-nominated German actor David Cross puts it, this is a football story, a sports story, but also it is a story about reconciliation. About coming to terms with the past and starting anew. Trotman's journey from fully indoctrinated member of Hitler Youth to FA Cup winner and Oak contained many sliding doors moments. He was a talented young athlete from Bremen with dreams of competing in the decathlon at the 1940 Olympics until war got in the way. He became a paratrooper and was decorated for bravery including receiving the Iron Cross on the Eastern Front then was captured and escaped from the Russians, the French resistance and the Americans. When he was captured by the British at Cleve in 1944 it was so close the end of the war he decided enough was enough. Instead of making it back to his home city he wound up at a POW camp in Lancashire. There he played camp football, initially as a center half, but when injury intervened as a keeper. It was when playing for St. Helens Town in non-league football that in 1949 Top Flight City came calling. It was when playing for St. Helens Town in non-league football that in 1949 Top Flight City came calling. He had been watched by a number of clubs at the time, since historian Gary James, who acted as a consultant helping with some points of accuracy in the film's portrayal of Manchester. Bolton had watched him, and Burnley was another who were keen. But Manchester City needed a keeper after Frank Swift retired, and manager Jock Thompson took a gamble. For a club with a traditionally strong Jewish following and with their home at Main Road which had had nearby houses flattened in bombing raids, Trotman's acquisition did not prove universally popular. In later life Bert often exaggerated the number of protesters, but there were undoubtedly plenty, and there were fights in pubs over him and lots of abuse. Local papers made sure people knew of his war record too, he was a proud German, says James Tactfully. Whatever he did he wanted to do it well, and he did win the Iron Cross. Trotman was always reluctant to talk about wartime experiences, he is said to have witnessed a massacre of civilians by the SS in occupied Russia earlier in the conflict, it took an intervention from Manchester Rabbi Alexander Altman to turn opinion. His public letter saying one man should not be held responsible for the sins of a nation was significant.
but Trotman also made the effort to go out and talk to people. He always said, was just an ordinary guy from Bremen which had suffered the same way as Manchester. Born in Bremen, brought up in Manchester he used to say. That is where he learned about life and being a good human being. Intertwined throughout the film is the love story between Trotman and first wife Margaret Fryer, played by Scottish actress Freya Maver. It was with her help that he learned to see a different version of life, says Cross. Cross spent much of his Oscar-nominated film The Reader being seduced by Kate Winslet in a hot bath, so working out how to dive like a goalkeeper in a muddy field in Bavaria under the eye of Stuttgart's goalkeeping coach probably felt like proper acting. It is to his credit he has managed to recreate the football scenes uncannily compared to the black and white footage of Trotman, most notably the FA Cup final in which he broke his neck. The Wembley scenes were done in front of just a couple of spectators. I had to imagine what it was like playing with the crowd, but you create the atmosphere in your head. Trotman had collided with Birmingham City's Peter Murphy 17 minutes from time breaking vertebrae in his neck. Attended by the physio with a sponge and a bucket of cold water he played on, taking several other hits as City secured a 3-1 win. Four days later, complaining of a stiff neck and headaches, the full extent of his injury was revealed. Trotman could have been paralyzed or killed and spent the next five months encased in plaster from head to hip. Two and a half weeks after the FA Cup final the Trotmans also suffered the agony of losing five-year-old son John in a road accident, yet the keeper returned to play for City before Christmas the following season. A remarkable story of a life fully lived good and bad, and it is a film well worth seeing. The Keeper is in cinemas on April 5th.